Sky Genie Entertainment presents the following. The following is not suitable for children under the age of 18. It contains coarse language, sexual references, my own personal views and opinions. The characters of the show are fictional and are made for fun, not harm. We have breaking news. We have our live, I mean taped, correspondent, Johnny Florida, who is covering Hurricane Irma. Johnny? That's great, Johnny. What is the word going around? Hey, Johnny, I meant to tell you this off air, but if you are still a virgin and get sucked into the storm, that does not mean that you are getting blown by a woman just because the hurricane is named after a woman. You know that, right? Sweet mother of fuck, Johnny is dead. I mean, um, shit. Hit the music! Hello and welcome to the Sky Genie Show. We are the worst show ever. We're on episode 55 of the Sky Genie Show. You can hear this show on YouTube, Mixcloud, DMO, DTube, and now Bitchute. I'm always looking around to expand the show, to get more listeners, to get more viewers. I mean, why not? I'm about moving forward, not mo- moving backwards. Also, I am currently talking to somebody or a few people actually, to be the new co-host of the Sky Jenny Show. Not going to make anything official, but hoping I have something for the first anniversary of the Sky Jenny Show. That way, we can build to something special with that, couldn't we? If you are listening to this and are interested in becoming the co-host of the Sky Jenny Show, then DM me on Twitter at SDD916 and we will talk. Can't hurt, right? Let's start with Global Force Wrestling. Let's get all the bullshit out of the way. Despite all the bullshit happening with Jeff Jarrett, GFW have announced a new TV deal with Pop TV going into 2018. Pop TV is an ad channel, and they make money off the ad revenue. The sad thing is, if if the company that all the ads that are running don't make any money from watching GFW, then they don't get paid any money at all. Bar to the other they said it was. But you have to wonder. It's sad because Pop TV is the only channel that will take them, and they need to be on a broader network. Being on a channel pretty much for ads is not a good thing for a show that's meant to be the second largest promotion in, what, US or the world? Yet they are not. Sadly, Global Force Wrestling is nothing but a glorified indie. They want to be the second tier to WWE, or probably bigger, but they're not, and they never will, never will be. GFW need to stop pretending that they are uh, a big thing when they're only small. It's the little guy syndrome. They're insecure about their size, and will fight bigger people to in the hope and spirit and thinking they will win but they won't what happens is they get punched in the face they go right to the ground and they look pathetic not the movies they're not the underdog the underdog doesn't win they're they're the pathetic small guy with an ego they can't get the hint that they are not as good as they should be or that they think they are 
GFW have also announced that they will be at WrestleCon at WrestleMania next year. This is a smart move on their part because other wrestling companies generate money around WrestleMania. They were the only company, besides New Japan, because New Japan's in Japan, but they were the only company that would not book an event at WrestleMania and generate money. That's a smart thing to do. Because people come to that week, week, weekend, to experience WrestleMania for that fan access. But it also spawns off for other events for WrestleCon. People go to WrestleCon to see all the wrestlers, get all, to get autographs, to interact with the wrestlers. So it's a pretty cool event. The question though is will GFW still be around by this point? Now I think they will be. There's rumours going around that GFW is up for sale. And I'm not disputing that. But if the GFW name might be up for sale, but not the actual wrestling company. Not Impact itself. And this leads on to my next point. Ed Nordholm. Now, I have to give my opinion on this guy, because I don't, don't think I have. What I have been finding out for the last few weeks about this guy isn't particularly favourable. And may be the male version of Dixie Carter. And that is not good. There were all these reports going around that Anthem is trying to get away from everything wrestling, all wrestling related stuff they're trying to get rid of. But then he went on to Wrestling Observer Live and was promoting the GFW network. <laughs> wow, really you're back? <laughs> Look, I'm trying to make a point here. Stop making Global Force Wrestling Network a joke. <laughs> Die, motherfucker. <laughs> anyway, he went on Wrestling Observer Live, running the network. Hmm, all clear. And saying what the direction was for Global Force Wrestling. So, it's very conflicting. I don't know whether the people that are saying that this is going for sale or anything is telling the truth, or if this guy has changed his mind and decided to keep it, I don't know. Either way, if you're a GFW fan, I'll be really worried of this guy because I don't think he is an honest guy. The one thing I heard about this guy that he is a lawyer. And lawyers are trained to bullshit. I do hope that GFW does get out of this rut because as much as I dislike GFW, I'll make fun of it. I still want to see a wrestling company company survive. I want to see a wrestling company come and kick WWE's ass to kick them in the balls. And make them a very entertaining product. Because right now, they are not. Anyway, moving on, Ronda Rousey and WWE are looking to do business. There have been rumours going around that there has been a four horsewomen versus four horsewomen idea. But I have also seen reports that Vince McMahon has nixed the idea because Ronda Rousey and I think Shayna Baszler have not signed WWE contracts. And I believe it might be a bit difficult for Ronda Rousey as I still think she's under UFC contract. Now I think it would be a cool idea and Ronda Rousey was probably at one time one of the biggest names in UFC and Ronda Rousey coming to WWE would bring crossover appeal as Ronda Rousey was a draw in UFC, one of the biggest draws in UFC history. It's so funny when you see a heap of UFC fighters deny that but she was at one point. She was the only one at one point bringing outside appeal to UFC. And that is a draw. Now she wasn't the best fighter amongst the amongst the group, but still, when you have a draw, you have a draw. But anyway, moving on. Now I ended up watching Raw this week, as I had seen the match advertised between John Cena and Braun Strowman, and I decided to watch because if I said if John Cena was going to pin 
Braun Strowman clean in any way, shape, or form, or just ends up pinning him in any way, shape, or form, that I would no longer watch WWE. So I decided to go on Twitter and do Raw Savage hash with a hashtag, and made fun of the entire show. Or what I felt was stupid, like I'm doing with pay-per-views. And the thing I've got to say is, the build to the ma- of the match between John Cena and Roman Reigns is really unnecessary. I mean, at no point do I care. I find it shocking that they're jabbing at each other, but it's a stupid, stupid war. I mean, who seriously talks like that? If this was real, and a real argument... They would motherfuck each other. Hey motherfucker, you suck and you're Samoan. Then Cena could be like, hey motherfucker, you suck because you don't actually draw. What's funny though is the hypocrisy of Roman Reigns. Now he said that attendance records, merch revenue and everything is all up and is earning more than he did with John Cena. Now we know that's scripted but we know that's also bullshit. And what doesn't help is when fans take a photo of the arena and half of the arena is empty. You're selling out what, Roman? And it doesn't help when John Cena gets that smug look on his face. You know the one I mean. The one where he goes, I am better than you. That he doesn't take the whole thing seriously. Sadly, this is probably going to end up main eventing the pay-per-view. I don't see Braun Strowman and Brock Lesnar main eventing. With Cena and Reigns, I have a. Th- I, I don't don't know who's going to win now. I was going to say it was John Cena. I think it would make more sense for it to be John Cena, especially going from a B paper pay per view. And as I said, Roman Reigns should not beat John Cena at a B level pay per view. It's just crazy. But then this is WWE, and WWE logic applies. So. Roman's winning. But now we'll move on to the Brock Lesnar Braun Strowman build. The build up between Braun Strowman and Brock Lesnar I think has been tremendous. Braun Strowman has been put over like a massive monster. This man is unbeatable. The fact Roman Reigns beat him earlier this year I think really hurts this because he should be going into this undefeated and apparently Brock Lesnar is supposed to be taking time off. Now, will it be with the title or without the title? I would love for Braun Strowman to get the title. I think he would be perfect as champion. However, however, I do not see Brock Lesnar losing. I think Brock Lesnar wins to go on to face John Cena at the Royal Rumble to lose the title to Roman Reigns. That was the plan when Brock Lesnar got it, and I think that's the plan right now. Vince McMahon is going to do everything to get Roman Reigns over as the biggest babyface of all time. But you know it's not going to happen. He's going to get booed out of the building. You're going to get the same reaction you would have got if Roman Reigns went over at WrestleMania 31. And I do hope, I do hope, once this fails, that it puts the end of this stupid build to Roman Reigns. As he is not, he's not a draw. He's not a big star. And it doesn't matter what WWE does, it doesn't matter. Now, he has good matches. I will say, as much as I'm critical of Roman Reigns, he does have good matches. But his character, his demeanor, everything about him is not real, doesn't feel real, and does not, does not resonate, resonate with wrestling fans. If it did, he would be massively over by the crowd. Anyway, moving on. We got the promo vignette for Asuka who was coming to Raw. Asuka who was forced to relinquish the NXT Women's Championship will be coming to the main roster. Now, the injury probably came at a pretty good time for Asuka. When you think about it, yes, she'll be off TV for a few weeks, but it gives us an excuse to bring her to the main roster undefeated, because there was no other way to get get that title off her, and if she was beaten, well, the aura 
leaves. Now you never wish injury upon somebody, but this probably probably came at a really good time. Anyway, moving on. The Miz and Maurice have announced that they are having a kid. Yes, they announced on Raw that they are having a kid. Nikki Bella might have watched this and started drinking because of this. I mean, it goes back to the feud, doesn't it? Miz and Maurice seem to do more fucking on Nikki, Nikki Bella is signing more contracts with John Cena. From all of us here at the Sky Journey Show, I wish to send a congratulations to Ms. M. Maurice. Don't go away, because after the break, more of the Sky Journey Show. <laughs> Can't get enough of the Sky Jenny Show? Check out the website, skyjennyshow.weebly.com. There you'll find links to past shows and much more. Go to skyjennyshow.weebly.com today. For in-depth discussion and show updates, go to the show's Facebook at the Sky Jenny Show page. Do you need a good laugh after the crap you see on Monday Night Raw? Then check out the Don Tony and Kevin Castle Show as they break down Raw and current events in professional wrestling. The Don Tony Kevin Castle Show immediately after Raw. Looking for a podcast instead of wrestling? Then check out Get in the Corner with Dogger Baby and Yuck Nasty 8.30 Wednesday night on Mitzlaw. Do you need more fruits and vegetables in your diet? Check out juiceplus.com.au today. Juice Plus is the convenient and inexpensive way to add more nutrition to your diet from fruits and vegetables every day. Juice Plus Fruit Blend is made from seven different fruits. Juice Plus Vegetable Blend is made from ten different vegetables, grains, plus an array of natural antioxidants, phytochemicals, and fiber in a convenient capsule form. Each ingredient is especially selected to provide you with a wide range of nutritional benefits. We call it the next best thing to fruits and vegetables. Check out juiceplus.com.au today. Check out the Sky Journey Show on YouTube, Mixcloud, Vimeo, and DTube. And we are back. Kevin Owens this week on SmackDown headbutted Vince McMahon, then punched him, then super kicked him, then gave him a frog splash. Now, there's so much I've got to say on this. The good and the bad. The bad is, we get the McMahons on TV. More of the bad, the headbutt angle was maybe a little bit unnecessary. Probably very when there's a concussion lawsuit on your company. And Shibata almost died from a headbutt earlier this year. But here's the good part. First off, Kevin Owens working with the McMahons isn't necessarily a bad thing because they're putting Kevin Owens in a big light and pushing him to the moon. Kevin Owens working with the McMahons tells me that WWE has faith in him. And I really hope that WWE pushes him as a controversial motherfucker, Kevin Owens, who was wrestling in Kevin as Kevin Steen in Ring of Honor, was probably best as a controversial motherfucker. To me, it was his best work, and something that made me a fan. This was around the same time as when CM Punk was hot. Controversial Kevin Owens is money, and I would love for WWE to just make this take this a step further maybe they fire him quote unquote and have him go outside like with a megaphone and cussing out the company have Kevin Owens show up at indie places Ring of Honor even and cuss out the WWE now the rumor is it's going to boil down to a feud with Triple H it's weird because Triple H is supposedly to be the babyface in this, but I'm thinking Kevin Owens is probably going to get cheered because the McMahons aren't likable. They are natural heels. Kevin Owens, as a controversial motherfucker, will be the anti-hero. And you remember Stone Cold Steve Austin got over as the anti-hero. 
wasn't the stereotypical baby face. And it's something that WWE should probably adopt a bit more now because, let's face it, the baby faces, the way that they push a baby face now is really, really fucking lame. I think only AJ Styles is the only one that's a baby face is to, is the actually only baby face that's actually over, to be honest. I just rambled and babbled, but it just came at me and I'm saying this on the top of my head. AJ Styles to me is the only natural baby face in WWE. Problem with all the other baby faces is that they're all the same in cookie cutter. Kevin Owens just needs to be a con- controversial rebellious motherfucker because rebellion sells. Either way, moving on. The May Young Classic has ended and Kari Sane was the winner of the tournament. He has been announced as a participant in a multi-man, sorry, multi-woman match at the next takeover for the NXT Women's Championship that was vacated by Oscar. Now, I've got to say this, the outcome was predictable for the tournament. I had more of an idea that sh- that Kari Sane would win. I wanted Jenna Baszler to win because I think she's the most badass chick in the tournament. But, you know, WWE logic. Shanna Basler is apparently not even under WWE contract from what I hear as of recording. I do hope WWE signs that jazzy girl and Shayna Basler. I would love to see a program between those two as that would be a freaking brawl. But I think if anyone's going to win the next NXT Women's Championship it's going to be that Ruby Riot. As I was watching NXT uh, last night as of recording and they seem to be putting her in a position of the next star, the next female star. That is who I would go with anyway. But anyway, moving on. WWE 2K18 have announced their full roster reveal, but have still yet to release DLC. They've also revealed the My Career Mode. Now you can roam around backstage like you could in SmackDown Shut Your Mouth and Just Bring It. It was where you could form tag teams, feud with other wrestlers, I think this one adds interviews. You know it would be cool if you could walk in on somebody having an interview and just beat them up? That would be pretty sick. Also, they've redone the backstage brawl. And they've redone we've they've redone the whole backstage area. You could go out into the in the parking lot. And the criticism I got of 2K is that they take a lot of fun out of video games. What I'm finding this, it's looking like they're putting in a lot of fun into this game. And I do think it's something that has been missing. The fun stuff where you could interact, like you could, on on Here Comes the Pain, you can go into the backstage brawl, and you could ride around on the motorcycle and grab people and throw them. Or you could drive around in the forklift. It's looking really cool this year. Yes, I have pre-ordered it. Even though I haven't done much this year, I like to do what if matches. I was even thinking of doing something where I would have a bunch of matches and I do commentary over it and make an event out of it. I thought that would be pretty cool. Some exclusive content. But anyway, moving on. Leo Rush has made his NXT debut at the set of NXT TV tapings. Leo Rush is a really good high flying athlete. And would definitely bring bring excitement to 205 Live because that show really, really needs it. I am wondering if NXT is going to introduce a cruiserweight division. Yes, they got a 205 Live with a cruiserweight title, but then I think it would be a good idea to have that separate for the main guys, but the newer guys coming in, and to get them polished before they go to the main roster. Because let's face it, a lot of the guys that went straight to the main roster for 205 Live may not have been ready for big time TV and NXT has a way of bringing out a buzz but anyway moving on TM61 have made their return to the ring forget which one but one of them suffered a knee injury that took him out of action for most of the year I don't think they even had a match this year to be honest with you no one will remind me anyway after the break stupid shit of the week For those wanting to follow me on Twitter, it's at SDD916. Check it out. 
for discussions and opinions on the events of professional wrestling, check out Wrestling Soup with Joey Numbers, Anthony Missionary Thomas, and John Draper as they break down what's good and what's bad in professional wrestling with a light-hearted approach. Thursdays, 9.30 on Mixlaw, Saturday morning-ish, and after every WWE pay-per-view, you get a free post-show review. Check out Wrestling Soup, motherfuckers, for in-depth discussion on professional wrestling, as well as politics and the stupid laws in your state. Check out Wrestling's National Committee, with Johnny Florida, Old Man Jenkins, and Papa Dave Sensei, live on Mixlaw on Tuesdays during SmackDown for the after party of Wrestling Soup and on Sundays. Check them out. Looking for a good wrestling podcast for Sundays? Because let's face it, who isn't bored on a Sunday but also wants to have that lazy day? Then check out The Solar Monster Sounds Off. He breaks down everything that in the week that was professional wrestling. Also check out his Facebook page where there's numerous discussions on the topics of professional wrestling. Solomon's The Sounds Off drops every Sunday on Podbean. Hey, have you got a suggestion for Stupid Shit of the Week? Then please send it to Twitter at SDD916. That is at SDD916 on Twitter. <laughs> Welcome back, and now it's time for Stupid Shit of the Week. Hulk Hogan took to Twitter today to call the people who are complaining about no water and power, the Hurricane Irma, crybabies. You know, I was searching this week for Stupid Shit of the Week, and it was really hard because not much happened this week. So thank you Hulk Hogan, you are this week's Stupid Shit of the Week. And that'll be it for this episode of the Sky Genie Show. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Also, check us out on Mixcloud, VMO, and DTube. Go to my website, skygenieshow.weebly.com. Over on Facebook, it's the Sky Genie Show page. On Twitter, it's at SDD916. Thank you for listening, and I'll catch you later.